Hey everybody, my name is Brendan, aka Mr. Weaverface, and this is the first in a video series that I'm going to call Gamer Thoughts, kind of like a video essay of sorts. Today's topic is eBay, how it's used in video game collecting, and my philosophy in using it for my own collection. eBay started out way back in 1995. That was the same year that Microsoft released Windows 95, the same year of the Unabomber, the same year that Toy Story was released, and the same year that Nordberg, I mean OJ Simpson, was acquitted for murdering his wife. I'm glad he got his act together. eBay, you can pretty much find anything on there. I mean, even Weird Al Yankovic sang a parody song about finding a Smurf TV tray and an ALF alarm clock. Remember ALF? All right, we're on the same page then, good. With eBay, you can create entire video game collections without even leaving the comfort of your own home. And that doesn't sound like a bad idea. You save time, gas money, and the effort of running around trying to find games locally. I mean, the games even come to your front door for crying out loud. If you're a completionist collector, chances are you're not going to find those rare titles that you need in your county or even your state. You're going to need the national and even international scope that eBay utilizes to fill those gaps in your collection. The downside to this though is that you're definitely going to be paying a premium price for those rare titles. To the purist collector who only collects video games through local means, using eBay feels like cheating. The purist may also feel a greater sense of accomplishment and attachment to the games because let's face it, they work extra hard in acquiring them. A lot of time and sweat equity goes to visiting flea markets and yard sales in the early morning hours of Saturday and Sunday mornings. My strategy when I buy video games, either on eBay or locally, is to buy a bunch of them at a time. I feel like I get a better deal this way, and also it allows me to replace those funky games in my collection with those of better condition. But it does create the problem of duplicate games. So, even if you are a purist collector, how does one liquidate those duplicate games? You want to get top dollar for those duplicates, so you're probably not selling to the brick and mortar retro video game stores. Maybe you're using Craigslist, but that's sketchy, unreliable, and can sometimes be a waste of time. Using eBay to sell your games obviously takes a lot of time out of your day. You gotta take a picture of the item, then you gotta list and describe the item, then you gotta sell it, then you have to ship it, and that doesn't even include the hassle of those non-paying bidders. That's the downside to collecting that I could do without, getting rid of all those duplicate games. But I gotta do it, otherwise my wife would probably yell at me, and my kids may have some sort of traumatic injury by tripping over one of the piles of duplicate Nintendo carts. I don't need one of my daughters one day in the future tell me, remember this scar on my forehead? Yeah, that was from Time Lord. Personally, I'm a thrifty guy. It's just the way that I was raised. Just like Billy and Jay from the Game Chasers, I'm going to pay the least amount of money that I possibly can to get what I want to get. But I know that I'm not going to add a lot of good games to my collection if I always keep that philosophy. Sometimes you have to splurge. So I'll use eBay depending on my mood, but I still usually don't buy something if I don't feel like I'm getting a deal. On eBay, I like to check the auctions that are ending only in a few minutes. Sometimes I'll just throw a bid out there thinking, yeah, like, I'm going to get that for that price, and then I end up winning it. And eBay's finicky like that. I mean, sometimes I can't even find an Excite Bike cart for less than 15 bucks, and other days, I can get it for 99 cents with free shipping. eBay is helpful in figuring out which games are valuable. Now, I would never buy a single game at eBay prices unless it was a rare title, but I'm not at that point in my collection just yet. But some people on Craigslist, flea markets, and yard sales think you should be paying those jacked up eBay prices. The problem with that selling philosophy is this. eBay and PayPal take a percentage of the final value of the auction, just like any auction house. So if someone's selling Super Mario RPG on eBay for 50 bucks, they're not making 50 bucks, they're making less than that. And that doesn't even include the hassle and the cost of shipping. So when I buy locally, like anyone else, I try to get the best deal possible, but I'll set my high number at what a person may profit selling the same game on eBay. So for that Super Mario RPG example, I probably can't see myself uh, spending more than 40 bucks on that. Buying on eBay also takes time as well. You could spend hours and hours scrolling through each page. And even with the advanced search options, it can still be tedious, and that's not my definition of fun. And for me, the most important part of video game collecting is the fun factor. And let's face it, I have way more fun going to yard sales and flea markets and meeting people through Craigslist transactions and hearing about their video game stories than just buying something digitally on eBay. 
The second most important aspect of video game collecting is the discovery. I mean, if my career of being an optometrist did not pan out, treasure hunting archaeologist was going to be my backup career. And when you go to a flea market or a yard sale, you never know what you're going to find. I mean, honestly, mostly you do find crap, but it is those rare moments when you don't find crap and you find that golden nugget of gaming awesomeness. The last important part of video game collecting is getting that deal. Like I said earlier, you can find anything on eBay, but you're really not getting a deal. But it is those moments where you find something in the wild that is uncommon or rare and getting it at a fraction of the price of what eBay is asking, that's what I'm talking about. In conclusion, collecting video games is all about the balancing act. How much time and energy do you want to put into it? There are going to be many challenges, many of which I haven't even discussed. But the main thing about video game collecting is that it should always be fun. If it ever starts to feel like a chore, well, maybe then it's time to look for a new hobby. I would like to hear your thoughts on eBay and its role in your video game collection. And if you have any tips on using eBay to find video games. As always, please subscribe to the channel so that you can keep updated on new Mr. Weaver Face videos. Thank you again for watching this video. I'm Mr. Weaver Face. Take care.